It's the one essential ingredient of every World Cup match. Yes, a football. But when after months, probably years of testing, FIFA's 2010 Super Bowl was revealed, the world was shocked. I don't know if you saw it, it was, um, it was like no other ball we'd ever had before because this ball was, um, was sort of um, round. Designed by a team of super boffins at the University of Loughborough, it was called the Jubilani. This is a complete new ball. First and foremost, it's a technological revolution. Naturally, it had eight thermally bonded panels, giving a bounce variance of just six centimeters, which is important. There was only one problem. It didn't work. Straighten up and fly right. Straighten up and stay right. A lot of people had trouble with that Jubilani ball. Let's see. Never stop rising. No. The ball's tragic. There's going to be some crazy goals in this World Cup based on the ball. It's supposed to be a nightmare for goalkeepers. It seemed to be a bit of a nightmare for strikers, especially ours. Lampard to hit it. And Lampard to send it soaring into orbit. I don't know why they just can't play with normal football. Why do they have to keep messing about with a football? It's, it's basically um, a giant beach ball, that's what it is. It's an expect $200 beach ball. Of course not everybody agreed it was a problem. They were all saying, yeah, it keeps going up too high in the air. Well, I've got an idea, why don't you kick it lower? <laughs> like, Diego Forlan worked it out in the first match. Diego Forlan with a stunner! One of the very few people in this tournament who can get that ball up and down. Actually, Van Bronckhurst got it up and down as well. And, in fact, everyone German. The excuses that were levelled at the design of this ball were, were incredible. Um, how can a ball be too round? If they showed up and it was having to kick a square or a triangle, I can understand, but it's a ball, it's still a bloody ball. <laughs>